nothing in the world comes even close to it, and uh, it'll be known as the F-47. They said a sixth-generation fighter was nothing more than hype, just slides, slogans, and a dream too ambitious to touch. Yet in March 2025, the impossible rolled into sunlight at Joint Base Andrews, unveiled by President Donald Trump. The world saw the Boeing F-47, an aircraft that had been tested in shadows for five years. Familiar, yet alien, its diamond form bent physics instead of fashion. Once dismissed as fantasy, it now stood as America's bold gamble on air superiority. Before we dive deeper, make sure to hit the like button. It really helps us grow. The story of the F-47 began not on a parade ground, but in exercises where America's most advanced fighters started showing their limits. By the summer of 2022, during red flag drills over Nellis, planners watched simulated enemies exploit range and sensors while friendly jets ran short of fuel and options. Tankers became lifelines and lifelines became targets. The gap was obvious. Technology had outrun legacy fleets and survivability was shrinking. What followed was not a suggestion, but a mandate. Build a fighter that thinks faster, strikes farther, and survives longer than anything in the sky. Officially, the project carried a bureaucratic title, Next Generation Air Dominant. But inside the hangars, the team gave it a sharper phrase, the airplane that closes every distance. Boeing's digital factory in St. Louis turned this vision into code, simulations, and then into metal. Every line of software became a part, every part a sortie. Out of this process emerged not an experimental prototype, but a jet engineered to rewrite timeline. The goal was simple, yet transformative. Deliver an aircraft that would erase vulnerabilities exposed in the past and redefine the boundaries of American air power. What set the Boeing F-47 apart was not just its presence, but its invisibility. Earlier fighters relied on narrowband tricks, vanishing only from certain radar angles. The F-47 went further, shaping itself against every frequency. Low-band search arrays, high-band fire control radars, from nose to tail. Its edges curved naturally, seams blended into the surface, and even antennas disappeared beneath a skin that doubled as armor and sensory tissue. In combat, this design was more than aesthetic. It was a strategy. Instead of dashing in with afterburners blazing, the F-47 loitered silently where enemies expected a tanker, then emerged without warning where they expected safety. To opponents, it seemed like a phantom, absent when sought, present only at the moment of impact. Stealth was no longer a defensive feature. It became the jet's first offensive move. The F-47's power came from more than stealth. It was built to stretch distance and time. At its heart was an adaptive cycle engine, a variable geometry furnace tuned by software. This breakthrough let the jet cruise supersonic without the roar and waste of afterburners, conserving fuel while sustaining speed. The result was a combat radius beyond 1,000 nautical miles, a leap that earlier fighters could only attempt with chains of vulnerable tankers. For commanders, this meant collapsed timeline. Missions that once demanded hours of staging and refueling shrank to minutes. A carrier strike group across oceans gained cover without delay, while forward bases earned options instead of exposure. In the F-47, speed was redefined. Not just velocity, but choice, reach, and freedom of maneuver. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe for more. Inside the cockpit, the F-47 became less a fighter and more a command bay. A wide-field passive sensor suite painted the battle space without giving away its position. Its active electronically scanned array radar sculpted energy with precision. And when doctrine demanded silence, the same system transformed into a jammer. Data flowed through Link 16, the familiar joint network, but also through hardened mesh links that ignored missing antennas or jammed satellites. The effect in combat was staggering. Pilots no longer hunted for targets. Targets revealed themselves. 
awareness reached a level that felt almost unfair, giving commanders an edge measured not just in miles, but in decisions made before an enemy even understood what had happened. The F-47's promise was sealed by what it carried within. Hidden inside its internal bays were enough air-to-air -air missiles to thin out a raid and still keep reserves for later. Long-range strike weapons, once sized only for bombers, now rode quietly in their frame. Even stand-in electronic warfare pods were tucked away, ghosts inside compartments, ready to blind sensors when ordered. When commanders called for reach, the jet lifted hypersonic glide vehicles from reinforced stations, turning raw speed into destructive timing. The arithmetic was clear. Fewer sorties, more effects, and survivability that compounded with every minute the jet remained unseen. In the F-47, payload was not just armament, it was a force multiplier written into steel and stealth. The F-47 was not built to fight alone. Its greatest surprise came when autonomy stopped being a feature and became a partner. In trials at Edwards Air Force Base in late 2024, a single F-47 directed four unmanned teammates. Each drone took on a role, radar picket, decoy maneuver, sensor thief, and simulated strike platform. The manned jet stayed outside surface-to-air envelopes while its wingmen pressed forward. The test team called it proof of a clean kill without risk. For commanders, it meant multiplying presence without multiplying pilots. The F-47 treated these autonomous collaborative platforms as extensions of its own reach, rewriting tactics into a future where survivability and lethality worked hand in hand. Proof came not just in promises, but in flight lines. At Tonopah, Eglin, and Nellis, the F-47 logged sorties that rewrote tactic. Colonel Maya Ellison described it simply, a fighter that no longer asked permission from geography. Survivability became the word every debrief returned to. Funding followed fast. An initial $20 billion sprint seeded the program. And by fiscal year 2026, another $3.5 billion secured the supply chain. St. Louis bent frames, Palmdale finished skins and coatings, and Hill Air Force Base trained the first maintainers. With a production target of at least 185 airframes, this was no prototype meant to dazzle and die. It was a fleet designed to endure, equip multiple combat wings, and safeguard margin for attrition. At Nellis, the first cadre of F-47 pilots formed what they called Forge Flight, a nod to tactics hammered, cooled, and rehardened. Veterans from Raptor and Lightning Squadrons blended stealth ingress with sensor fusion, then layered in loyal wingman control. Training advanced quickly without cutting corners, producing instincts tuned for autonomy and reach. On the ground, maintainers found a different kind of edge. Portable cure units repaired stealth skins in hours, not weeks. Modular engine carts slid cores out like drawers, turning weekend swaps into single shifts. In the cockpit, an ultra-wide display reduced priorities to three. Tactile throttle cues nudged attention, and an onboard agent proposed options clearly. The F-47 was designed for both the fight and the fix. The Boeing F-47 proved that what began as a rumor became reality, shifting from whispers in hangars to a force of deterrence in the sky. Its stealth, reach, and loyal wingmen marked only the beginning. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.